given how satanic Christians assure me Sam Smith's Grammy performance was, it almost seems redundant to have our own godless version of them. But damn it, if it's not a tradition here on The Scathing Atheist. See, every year during awards season, and when we remember it, which isn't <laughs> all that often, actually, all things considered, we present our own awards for the best and worst of the previous year in a segment called The Pentagrammies. It's a magical night, Noah. Yeah, and it? Magical night. <laughs> I, got, I know I got dressed up. Now, there are five categories, each with three nominations. We don't pick a winner because literally nobody cares, and that's not the point. But our first category, we're going to start off <laughs> with best religious news item of 2022. It's like the SAG Awards. All right. Anna? <laughs> that's right. They're freaking out, and that's my favorite thing. In particular, I'm talking about all the data that we got last year about the downward trend in church attendance and in religiosity. And even more importantly, I'm talking about the panicky, sad, despondent Christian freakouts that followed each time. One of the biggest moments was a survey from the Pew Research Center that predicted the U.S. population will be just over 50% non-religious by 2070. And the idea of being just barely a minority in about half a century was terrifying to Christian leaders across the country. I mean, have you seen how they treat minorities? Heath, I'd be scared yeah. too. <laughs> well, yeah, and, and making it on your own merits requires a lot more merits than those privileged fuckers have ever shown us before. <laughs> yeah. So, you know. <laughs> and when other surveys showed that younger people are giving approximately zero fucks about religion, the Christian leaders started running campaigns about like Jesus being a woke TikTok refugee or whatever the fuck. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> but that just reeked of desperation that kids can sense from a mile away, and it made it even worse. And at the end of all these stories, there was always a bunch of evangelical leaders just ugly crying a little speech into their cell phone about, like, the devil is taking over. And their kids are in the background being like, shut the fuck up. Nobody cares. See, this is why you'll never see your grandkids. Nobody likes it. <laughs> and, of course, my favorite example was Dennis Prager who literally wrote a pro-bigot op-ed that ended with him whining about all the religious bigots who called him in actual tears about how they're alone for Christmas because they're not allowed to see their grandkids just because they're religious bigots. Yeah. Aww. Well, if they think Christmas is lonely, just wait till they find out how they're going to die. Am I right? right? Yeah. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to go with one that just barely squeezed in under the wire. It happened on the very last day of 2022, but it did happen. I know I'm not supposed to enjoy it as much as I did and continue to do, but I'm going with the death of Pope Benedict. Ooh. Right? Yeah, and it wasn't just the fact that he died. It's what his death represents. Because, look, the new boss isn't all that much better than the old boss. Pope Francis certainly says better stuff, but he doesn't actually do better stuff. And Benedict was already off the throne, so it's not like him dying made any policies, changes, or anything like that. But it's a great reminder that all of those priests that came of age when the Roman Catholic Church was still culturally significant are dying. They're dying off. And when you look at the numbers worldwide, it's a reminder of the fact that Catholicism itself is dying. And like Benedict, it will become increasingly pathetic and irrelevant until it does. Wah, wah. Yeah, it's, it's like when they change the name of your racist dining hall at college. Like everybody already called it the scoob or something anyway, but you're glad it's happening. You know, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And speaking of which, maybe it's time for George Mason University to stop having the Antonine Scalia Law School. Mm -hmm. Do you need us to hit you on the head with a magical hammer? Fucking stop. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> also, it's a, a honorable mention in mind to Cardinal Pell dying. That, that happened a week and a half later. It doesn't actually count as 2022. If it did, that would have topped my list. And not because it's symbolic of anything either. It just would have been entirely because he didn't get to breathe anymore. So that, that too. Just a, a win, a win, a win. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I know mine is cheating slightly, but I would argue the following is a religious news item in that if there was ever something to be prayed to, if I had a call to Mecca, if ever there was a moment that filled me with the religious ecstasy that motivates saints and suicide bombers alike, it is this one. I'm talking, of course, 
about when Alex Jones found out live in real time that his lawyers had accidentally turned over the entire contents of his phone to the other side. <laughs> oh, that was so good. And then he was ordered to pay a billion dollars to the families of Sandy Hook. <laughs> yeah, it's not often that you can honestly say that somebody would have been better off without a lawyer Right. Or with a dog lawyer or something. But, but like, seriously, like Air Bud would not have sent his phone conversations to a posting no, council. Well, he would he have wouldn't have had to pay more than a billion fucking oh, God, dollars. This was so fun watching that happen. Watching evil people learn about their horrible failures in real time is it's it's very sexual for me. I got to be mm -hmm. honest. I make little flip books for myself with the photos <laughs> of these things. I keep them in my nightstand. Mm -hmm. no, sure. I get it. Like I Pornhub get it. VR needs to get a hold of this and make Ooh. it a tab. Do you, oh, <laughs> man, you remember when Giuliani learned in real time that Trump had actually yeah. lost the election and it was in fact declared while he was doing the Four Seasons Total Landscaping speech? Absolutely. <gasps> oh, so good. I put I put a couple examples for you guys. I gave you, you Alex did. Jones you and Rudy Tim. Julia. Please share these. Share these with the people. They need them in these dark hours. Patrons, if you're if if you if you're at the seeing the notes level, dude, Jeff, definitely check out the headlines this time. Yeah, yeah. And, and let me be clear: Alex Jones will be paying that billion dollars. Right? He cannot declare bankruptcy. He cannot rely on state limitations and fees of this nature. Every penny Alex Jones makes for the rest of his life will, at least in part go to the people he victimized in their dark times, in their darkest hour. And that is why it's my best religious news item of 2022. Fair. Absolutely. All right. <laughs> On to the second category. And that's the one that best encapsulates the scathing atheist's mission statement, I think. So who's your nominee for religious figure who has done the most to promote atheism in 2022? Ooh, okay. Um, I'll go first this time. I'm going to start things off with Pastor Greg Locke. Nice. Now, for those of you out of the loop, Greg Locke rose to prominence during COVID for defying lockdown regulations and killing a bunch of his parishioners. So already he's helping out the numbers there. But once Gregums couldn't get attention through being in a building illegally anymore, he spent 2022 on an absolute bender of stupid behavior. First, in February, he announced that he knew about six literal witches within his congregation and promised to hunt them down and call them out personally. A, a literal witch hunt. Yep. Started yep, the year with a hunt. literal witch hunt. Yes. Mm -hmm. And while he didn't ever end up finding any witches, he did get a series of roasty voicemails and letters that he claimed were hexes. And then I assume <laughs> he tried to set his what? metal mailbox on fire for a couple hours before he tucked it himself out. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. To be clear, he spent 2020 and 2021 actively killing off Christians with COVID misinformation and still may have done more to promote atheism this year. It's incredible. Yeah. But there's more. February, again, truly a banner month for Craig. That is also when he organized his very own book burning, calling on his congregation to, quote, bring all your Harry Potter stuff all your Twilight books and movies, that mess is full of spells, demonism, shape-shifting, and occultism. Huh. Bring tarot cards, Ouija boards, healing crystals, <laughs> idol statues, <laughs> spell books, and everything else tied to the occult, end quote. Yeah, and the fucking store down the street called Wicca Basket Boutique made a bunch of money that week because how his congregation was right. going to be holding all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. right. I do. So made no. a whole bunch of money selling them crystals they could burn. <laughs> <laughs> and, ow, hot, hot rock. Shit, it's a rock. <laughs> and last, but certainly not least, Greg gave up his status as a charity this year. No, he didn't. <laughs> After Greg spent a pre-midterm service openly endorsing a candidate who lost and telling his parishioners that they can't vote for Democrats, Americans United wrote the IRS a letter saying, what would you say you do here? Mm -hmm. And as a result, Greg tore up a piece of paper saying that he's a charity. Now, to be clear, he's still very much a church, so that means nothing. And when reporters looked into it, he actually hadn't made any legal changes to his businesses at all. So he... Probably didn't do the nothing he said he was doing. <laughs> yeah, right. So, so you you so you've got tried to do something and failed, and and beyond that, you've got tried to do nothing and failed. And over <laughs> here, where Greg is, you have pretended to try to do nothing and fail. And yep, failed. That's where he Swing is. and a miss on that. Yep. And just a quick reminder: Greg ended that sermon that day by saying, "I renounce five hundred one c three communism." 
<laughs> we'll say what we want to, Skippy Lou. And the IRS and the FBI can eat my dirty socks on live TV. Yep, that is that is what he said. Precisely the words he used. Mm-hmm. Skippy Lou. Skippy Lou. <laughs> Either way, he did all these things as publicly as possible, causing Christians all over the country to go, shit, that's our guy? He's on our side? <laughs> Which is why he's my nominee for religious figure who has done the most to promote atheism. Okay, really solid answer. Thank you. I'm going to go with Kanye West. Oh, or nice. Or yay, or yip yip, or whatever it is now. <laughs> He's arguably the most well-known evangelical Christian in the world right now. And that is not good for evangelical Christianity. Mm-mm. So if the secret Illuminati Jewish people are indeed trying to murder Kanye with space lasers or whatever the fuck he's claiming, the rest of the Christian world is probably on board with the plot. And here's the thing, just to review, Kanye's Christianity has taken the form of supporting Donald Trump and blaming slavery on the slaves, not using their vision boards correctly and choosing wrong, and posting a giant series of anti-Semitic comments that were so fucking toxic that Elon Musk and Donald Trump both had to distance themselves from Kanye. Mm -hmm. In 2022, Donald Trump and Elon Musk of 2022 were like, dude, you're fucking up our brand. We got to just distance ourselves (laughs) a little bit. You're a failure right now this year. And just a reminder, that anti-Semitic tirade included, I'm going to go Def Con 3 on Jewish people, which is both extremely silly and also extremely genocidal. It's a tricky combination to pull off, but he did it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, Kanye was definitely the... Jerry Falwell Jr. of 2022. That's fun. And Pete Davidson, I guess, was the pool boy of 2022 (laughs) for this award. I don't think he was allowed to watch. Congrats and thanks all around to everybody involved. Yeah. Side note, I think I've mentioned this before, but Kanye also provided us with the single greatest example of comedic timing in 2022 (laughs) in an interview about his mental health. No, I I know we don't usually play clips here on The Scathing Atheist, but it's only 20 seconds and it is the greatest thing that ever happened. Do you mind? Not at all. And if you haven't seen it, YouTube, it was a Jewish doctor. It's, It's just the best comedy thing that's literally ever happened. Get out there. Mm -hmm. Check it out. All right. So I I know... We normally go with priests and pastors and religious leaders and that kind of shit for this reward. But given the extent to which it's now an explicitly religious institution, I'm going to go with the Supreme Court justice for this one. And of course, I'm going with Sam Alito, because honestly, after a decade of playing Cassandra on this show and warning people of the very real danger of right wing Christian theocracy in this country, in one fell swoop, Sam Alito lent credence to every fear we've ever expressed. Yep. All while living a 13-minute drive from my house. I know you're testing me, simulation creators, and I'm not going to do it. I'm not going (laughs) to. Okay, but how are they going to learn from the simulation, Eli? You'd be doing it for science, is what I'm saying. Doing whatever it meant, whatever it meant. Yep. So, So, look, even when people on the right started openly embracing the term Christian nationalism, even through all the Trumpian bullshit, there were still people who, who were like trying to pretend that this was an extreme within the party, right? That, that this effort to rein in the rights of non-Christians, to allow right-wing religious interpretations to dictate law, to redefine the very concept of religious freedom was confined to the far reaches of the political spectrum, despite them having the fucking president, right? It, it, it's just, they, they would say, it's, well, the extremists have gotten a hold of the party, but once the moderate Republicans take back over, the threats would subside. But Alito predated Trump by a fucking decade, and he's a reminder that the last moderate Republican was Gerald fucking Ford. Anyway. Bill Clinton. Yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. That brings us to a related category, the moment that most conflicted with the concept of a loving God. Now, look, if we were specifically talking about the moment that most conflicted with the concept of a Christian God, I'd go with the midterms. Uh, his, his, I got their asses <laughs> handed to him. But the assignment is the uh, is the moment that most conflicted with a loving God, which is in many ways the opposite of a Christian God. So sorry to bum everybody out, but I'm going to go with the Uvalde school shooting because that's the kind of shit that just could not fucking happen if there was an omnipotent being capable of intervening in the actions of humankind. 
Yeah, well, as we learned, it's the kind of thing that can happen with a hallway full of cops capable of intervening in the actions of humankind. Yeah, so, yeah you know. right. Well, right. And, and look, so we, when you present that kind of an argument to apologists, they, they always have to jump to these silly extremes and say, sure, but if God intervened every time somebody tried to shoot up a school, we'd notice the pattern. God's existence would be provable. And he couldn't like, you know, fucking measure our morality if he knows we ex if, if we know he exists rather. Yeah, no, we wouldn't want to cheat on the quiz. Right, if you have to <laughs> sacrifice some children to that. You can't God while we're looking like he's <laughs> peeing? Right. Well, so, okay, there are a million things wrong with that line of thinking. But when you look at something like the Uvalde shooting, I think the best argument is the scale. 19 people died. So, like, so if God had just given the shooter a heart attack four victims in or whatever, I don't think we'd be like, well, that clearly demonstrates the hand of the divine right there. There would have been 19 victims if not for Jesus. And how even if everybody who ever decided to shoot up a school had had a heart attack the day before, I don't think we'd be struck by the lack of school shootings. <laughs> yeah. Here's the thing, though, Noah. Whenever God closes a door... He opens a window. I think Ooh. I've heard that before. Oh, yeah. did you think of that, that? Also, one last thing. That bullshit, no peeking at the answer to salvation apologetic, also makes no sense in the context that Christians are constantly claiming everything is revelation, right? Right. The Bible is revelation. Guy gets shot, but he doesn't die. Revelation. Church blows up, but the tea stays up. Revelation. Yes. What is God's the fucking masked magician up in here? He's the, <laughs> three <laughs> secrets I'll never reveal. <laughs> But, but there's another element of this that makes it worth bringing up because all of those coward-ass cops standing around outside waiting for somebody else to do something were also doing a great job demonstrating that Christians don't believe in a loving God either, right? For, forgive my assumption that at least most of those motherfuckers were Christian, and yet none of them were like, well, clearly God would be on my side and provide me protection and grant me favor, and even if he didn't, surely I would pass like straight into heaven if I get killed trying to save kids, right? Not a one of them acted on that thought. No. Hey, Dave, weren't you talking about your breastplate of righteousness the other day yeah. or something like that? Yeah. Right. Laundry day? You no, you can't go in. <laughs> wash. It's in the wash. Laundry day. It's in the wash. So, yeah, so I guess somebody else transitioned away from mass murder at an elementary school. I was going to say, okay, okay. Um, here we go. How about a reminder that 2022 was the year that Roe versus Wade was officially legally overturned mm -hmm. and will stay overturned for almost certainly a generation? Okay, so we're, we're easing the audience back in. Got it. Yeah, we don't, don't want them to get the bends. And, and look, the story of this tragedy is worth going over for the cheap seats because across the political spectrum, right, left and right, people seem to not understand that this decision was a direct result of religiously motivated politics, right? The Christian right have been working on this decision for decades, making it a pet tentpole issue for every political candidate and compromising whatever the hell they needed to put the candidates in office who would appoint the judges they knew would rule the way they wanted them to. They provided millions of dollars and legal infrastructure to put this case before the court. And now they help the troglodytes who they put in office write the laws to enforce that decision. And I cannot emphasize this part enough all it took was one election of a few people letting their guard down for this to happen. Yeah. Well, and, and the, the fucking complacency that comes with success, right? Because they'd been beating their heads against that wall for so fucking long. We assumed that that wall couldn't come down and eventually they head butted their way through. Right. While a bunch of people were getting distracted being like, I want to make a wall with ponies. Now there's no yep. wall. Yep. Now yeah. there's no wall there exactly. at all. Yeah. Let's talk about the results here because the result is the most vulnerable people in our society, rape victims, teen pregnancies, victims of abuse, they are all trapped much more firmly than they were just a year ago. Many of them will never escape poverty or those situations as a result of this law change. And yeah. way too many of them are just going to fucking die. And there's not a fucking thing you or I can do to fix that, right? We had our chance and we blew it. And that's not enough to make you lose the idea of a loving God. I hope it's enough to make you lose the idea of not voting ever the fuck again. Okay, so something that contradicts the idea of a loving God. Um, mm -hmm. Hey, uh, loving God, uh, if you're listening, just want to read a couple quick stats for you about the world you control omnipotently. Last year, about 50,000 kids died of cancer. The number two cause of death in children is actually cancer. The number one cause is accidents. 
And you know what? It doesn't really make your grade any better if we switch that around mm -mm, or move the no. rankings. So just to review, you killed that many kids last year with cancer. You're probably going to do it again. And even more with accidents. And I'm here telling you about it on the Scathing Atheist <laughs> podcast. Yeah. Right, yeah. Like you don't exist or something. All right, so we had a school shooting, we had losing reproductive rights, and we had baby cancer. I feel like we just dropped this category from now on, I was, guys. I was, oh, exact, I was exactly <laughs> going to say, let's do, can't we do the ones that they just show a montage of at the Oscars, like <laughs> yeah. best lighting or whatever? <laughs> Make up in a documentary. The technical pentagrammies, yeah. <laughs> All right, and with that, we're going to move on to our penultimate award of the night, Biggest Asshole of 2022. Ooh, okay. All right, this one we can have some fun with. Uh, once again, I'm going to take the easy choice, and I'm going to go with Ronald Nancy DeSantis. Is that his actual middle name? Who's to say? But... If there was ever a governor of a burning pit of despair worthy of our ire outside of the Dungeons and Dragons canon, it's Ron DeSantis. Hey, burning pit of despair. Uh, I know you're probably listening too. Maybe you can primary Ron DeSantis next time around. <laughs> that would be great. I will become a Republican and move to Florida so I can vote in that. Yeah. For you. Yeah. And it's honestly hard to say where to begin with Ronnie Dietz. With the overturn of Roe versus Wade, he immediately signed a 15-week abortion ban into law. His infamous Stop Woke Act and other educational sabotage technically took place at the end of 2021, but they're worth mentioning. He, of course, kidnapped migrant families and flew them up north as a fucking gotcha. But over and above all, Ron earns himself asshole of the year in my mind for his attacks on children. Yeah, the the fuck the very fact that there's a which underprivileged group did he most in danger competition justifies your nomination at the very mm -hmm. least. Yeah. So again, his signature went on the Fairness in Women's Sports Act, which stops trans children from being able to participate in school sports in 2021. But it was almost exactly a year ago this week that he cemented his title with the Florida Parental Rights in Education Act, or as it's commonly known, the Don't Say Gay Laws, which prohibit public schools from even mentioning sexual orientation or gender identity from kindergarten to third grade, or in any manner deemed to be against state standards in all grades. It also prohibits public schools from granting students confidentiality about their sexual identity or gender from parents even if said exposure would result in abuse and requires public schools to bear all the costs of all lawsuits filed by aggrieved parents in those situations. Because what's the fun in suing your guidance counselor for not outing your trans kid if you have to pay for it? Am I right? Yeah. Yeah, no, this man's entire political existence is predicated on the idea that acceptance has gone too far. Yep, sure is. And uh, just a reminder, he's 44 years old. He's 44, and we might be in a simulation, right? <laughs> talking about before? Now, all of this and much, much more is Ronnie's desperate attempt to secure his position as the Republican nominee for president in 2024. And while whether or not he'll run is uncertain, I really, really hope he does because I can think of no better punishment than lowering him into the pit of man-eating pigs that are the Republican base, which is exactly what will happen to him if he runs against Donald Trump. Yep. All right. Really solid pick with DeSantis. I'm going with Marjorie Taylor Greene. Oh, speaking of man-eating pigs. Yeah. M-T-G. And not just because of the extreme prolapsing effect of doing pull-ups on top of a cattle prod or whatever the fuck was happening in that video. <laughs> <laughs> She's also the biggest figurative asshole I can imagine. Uh -huh. So, Quick review of the latest highlights from the magical, tagical, gadgetical and her 2022. Whoa, whoa. No, he's going to try and sum up MTG. We may need to go 90 minutes on this episode. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> of course, I'll be starting with Jewish space lasers. Jewish space lasers, of, of course. course yeah. This one actually started in 2021, but MTG decided to bring this back up in 2022. She claimed that California was having wildfires because the Rothschild family and Diane Feinstein's husband are controlling laser beams from outer space and they shot the beams at California to start wildfires that would stimulate the high speed rail industry and therefore finally consolidate power in the hands of the people who already 
control the world banking system and already have literal space lasers. <laughs> right. She really said that. And everybody was like, what? What the fuck are you talking about? And then last year, a year after she said that and got yelled at because it's insane. Last year, she was like, hey, you guys remember when I said Jewish space lasers are real? That was fun. Anyway, I just learned about the Holocaust really yeah. recently. I'm 47 yeah. years old. Turns out it was kind of bad. I went to this museum. <laughs> it was kind of bad. Yeah. To be clear, she was already apologizing for different stupid bullshit she had said, and she brought up the space lasers. She chose yeah. to bring it up. I'm just picturing some poor publicist from the back going, don't add, Marjorie, the last thing you need to do is add. <laughs> chop Don't it. Add. I'm doing the chop neck thing. Right. Are you Jesus. doing the, the hand twisty thing? You're saying keep going? No, it's not even. Uh, unfortunately, the kernel of truth here is that we will have space lasers before we have high speed rail in this fucking sure, country. Yeah. <laughs> so from there, we got mostly nothing, honestly, because MTG got benched by the Republican Party and pulled from committee assignments because she's awful. But that gave her plenty of time to attack the trans child of a Democratic colleague in Congress by putting up a transphobic poster in their shared hallway over and over. Of course, that led to MTG having a meltdown when that colleague just kept taking down the bigot poster. And when MTG tried to narc to the Capitol Police, they were like, uh, go fuck yourself. You, you try to get us killed by a mob. We're not mm -hmm, doing yep. anything to help you. Okay. My favorite part of that story is that according to some media sources, she tried to put cameras up <laughs> to catch the colleague and the Capitol Police had to be like, we we have cameras, Marjorie Taylor Greene, <laughs> in, in the building where you're up. We just don't care. Did you think right. we didn't have cameras <laughs> so near your congressional office? <laughs> Are you putting up a stick in a box? I'm, I'm going to go ahead and say a lot of Republicans apparently didn't think the Capitol building had cameras. So we, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, well, that brings us to October of last year when MTG's husband filed for divorce because she's a terrible person who deserves to die alone, just all sad and scared. Nobody there to hear the quiet panic of her last feeble breath because Dennis again, Prager's she's getting out a guitar in the background. <laughs> <laughs> and that same week, we also heard rumors that she was having affairs with a tantric sex guru and a personal trainer. But MTG denied those rumors and blamed it on the, <laughs> her exact words, the avowed communist. <laughs> and she was talking about the fourth Viscount Rothermere. Yes. The <laughs> billionaire owner of the media empire that includes the Daily Mail. That guy, the communist. Th that communist. Mm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Match, why would we make up rumors about you? Like, ser like, seriously, of all the people on earth, you're the one we least need to make shit up about if we want to degrade you. Like, if I wanted to make you look bad, I would literally just repeat whatever the last thing you said into a microphone was. <laughs> yeah, that's what, and we do it for a living, man. We, yes, we do it yes, for a living. If anybody knows. <laughs> yeah. So really rough 2022 for MTG. But perhaps the best Madge Tadge Gadge failure of the year was her war crime of a Thanksgiving turkey that she <laughs> proudly posted on Twitter. It's terrifying. It looked like, honestly, like she covered a frozen bird in like wet paper towel and microwaved it on low for a few <laughs> minutes like she was reheating spaghetti. The founding fathers would hang her for treason for this turkey. I'm certain that's what they believed in their hearts. I feel like he's getting lost in Ron DeSantis' shadow a bit here, but my nominee for this one is Greg Abbott. Ooh. Right, and honestly, if I go through this whole bio, it'll start sounding like I'm copying off of Eli's notes a little bit, but basically he's in a competition with Ron DeSantis for the last couple of years over who can earn the title of the GOP's cruelest governor. I mean, to be fair, it's not like you can race him for it. So. Yeah, well, that's true. Oh, Jesus, dude. <laughs> Get Madison Cawthorn in there, too. Yeah. Because he's crippled. <laughs> Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So he's got the high score between the two of them when it comes to randomly transporting immigrants to places with no support as a political stunt, including sending 100 plus Venezuelan immigrants to Kamala Harris's residence on Christmas fucking Eve, despite the fact that they were all dressed for Texas weather. Yeah. Marley and Marley are just floating there with their chains. Wow. Someone should fucking kill that guy. What? <laughs> 
<laughs> oh no, we're not gonna waste ghosts on him. You should yeah, shoot right. him yeah. in the head with a gun. Yeah. Shoot yeah. Me a gun. You guys have guns now, Maybe right? Maybe a simulation. Yeah. Seriously, it feels like the lesson teaching demons. We're all like, not it. We're not doing it. No, yeah. no, no, no. Right. Yeah. Make the one that's a little girl do it. She told me to fuck yeah. myself. Okay. <laughs> never mind. <laughs> just sit there in that section. No, the whole section's cut. I'm We're just that. leaving that table. <laughs> Too bad. So, but the move that really earned him top honors in my book is the fact that in 2022, he instructed state agencies to treat gender affirming medical treatments for transgender kids as child abuse. Right. And of all the fucked up phrases and legal terms that the Republicans have tried to redefine for political gain over the last few years, none is more dangerous or terrifying, I think, than redefining child abuse. Well, except maybe redefining murder to include women, you know, exercising their reproductive rights, which he also does. So yeah. he's got that as well. Yeah. All right. So finally, we're going to wrap things up on a bit of an up note. Who is your nominee for Atheist of the Year? Ooh. Okay. I feel like Anthony Fauci deserves to get this one forever. We just have to keep giving it to him, right? Yeah. yeah. And also, I think we should give him a Lifetime Achievement Award with like a montage, Time Your Life by Green Day playing, <laughs> yes. Low Job Robot. He deserves all the awards. <laughs> sure. But serious answer for specifically 2022, the organizers of QED. Oh, good one. It was so good. Marsh, Andy, Nicola, Alice. Mike, everybody else involved, sorry I skipped some names, just everybody involved, it was amazing. It's truly the best humanist event on the planet. And well, I'm guessing other planets don't really do humanist events. So like best in the universe. <laughs> Probably not, yeah. <laughs> if you're ever wondering, okay, yeah, we all agree about zero gods, now what? What would you say we do here? If that's on your mind, QED is a live action answer to that question. How to do good on Earth correctly and why. Yeah. It's amazing. It's also fun. Well, right. And they organized this whole thing with the specter of COVID hanging over their heads, not knowing if they'd have to cancel at the last second and just eat the costs. They're dealing with travel and logistics now that their country has you know, readopted the mercantile policies of George the First. It's, it's <laughs> incredible that, like, that they pulled this off at all, let alone made it amazing. Yes. And I just want to point out that we say that even though Marsh pulled the fire alarm and then... When everyone got outside, he was standing there drunk and shirtless and told us that this was a good time to fight us all because he was, quote, in the streets where I am king. Like, we're still, still. <laughs> that is that is also how I remember it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just typical Marsh being Marsh. That's what right. happens. Marsh. That's what happens at the end of QED. Yep. Where I remember. Yep. Or in the middle. Okay, so I know that he doesn't describe himself using the A word, but my vote this year goes to Maryland C Congressman Jamie Raskin. He is, along with Jared Huffman, the founder of the Congressional Free Thought Caucus. He's a tireless advocate for scientifically literate legislation. He's a formidable opponent of theocracy. And as a member of the House Select Committee on the January 6th attack, he was the most vocal in highlighting the part that Christian nationalism played in fomenting the riot. Incidentally, he's also currently undergoing chemotherapy for non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, and that has not stopped him from being an incredible advocate for secular values at all. Exactly. Yeah. Now, I'll be the first to admit that I haven't always hit home runs in my nominations for this category. Okay. But the answer for this one is obvious, and I know that I am never, ever going to regret it. So, my nominee for Atheist of the Year for 2022 is, of course, third-party congressional candidate Mike Ictis. Oh. Who? <laughs> what? Put his money shot where his mouth is, and to prove his dedication to his pro-sex work platform... <laughs> released a sex tape with a porn star. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I remember that guy. And I know it's going to take some getting used to, but I have an idea. This feels way more informative than our debate format. Oh, oh absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Could we just do mm -hmm. sex tapes from now on instead and just be like, all right, yeah. that's how I'm evaluating my vote. I feel like that's just more useful for democracy. Yeah, that's how I end up supporting Buttigieg as well. So yeah, it works out for everybody. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I bet he's, re I bet he's re uh, you know, tender. A tender lover, exactly. Yeah. So Itkus, who brought in a whopping 0.3% of the vote, <laughs> woo, has a lot of ideas, all of which are cool and dope, I'm sure. Don't <laughs> worry, I did not bother to Google them. But with morals that turgid, with a willingness to come in the face of opposition, I'm sure that his nomination will be one that I am proud of for years to come. <laughs> I'm sure it will. Well, there you have it. Letting Eli watch you fuck a porn star isn't guaranteed to get you his Atheist of the Year nomination, but it certainly couldn't hurt. 
Marsh. Seth. Um, and, I, and, I, and I guess that's as good a thought to close on as any. So congratulations or whatever the opposite of that is to all our nominees, as the case may be. We'd love to do more, but I can already hear Morgan playing me off. So I guess that's going to do it for this year's Pentagrammys. <laughs>